This is Democracy Now!, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Morocco and Israel have agreed to establish diplomatic relations as part of a U.S. brokered deal. Morocco, the fourth Arab nation to establish ties with Israel since August. As part of the deal, the United States agreed to become the first country in the world to recognize Morocco's sovereignty over occupied Western Sahara, what many consider to be Africa's last colony. It's due to open a consulate in the occupied city of Dakhla, where there are few, if any, U.S. citizens. Morocco has occupied much of the resource-rich territory since 1975 in defiance of the United Nations and the international community. Thousands of Sahrawis have been tortured, imprisoned, killed and disappeared while resisting the Moroccan occupation. Following Morocco's invasion in 1975, about half the Sahrawi population fled to neighboring Algeria, where they've lived for the past 45 years in refugee camps in the middle of the desert. The deal comes less than a month after a nearly three-decade-old ceasefire ended in Western Sahara. Joining us from Spain is Maloud Saeed, a representative in Washington of the Polisario Front, the Sahrawi Liberation Movement seeking independence. Also with us in the United States, Stephen Zunas, professor of politics and international studies at the University of San Francisco, the co-author of Western Sahara, War, Nationalism and Conflict Resolution, Irresolution. Uh, we welcome you both to Democracy Now! Stephen Zunas, if you can make that link between Morocco recognizing Israel and the U.S. in exchange, it seems, uh, officially accepting Morocco's annexation of the occupied Western Sahara. It was clearly a quid pro quo, uh, though the United States has uh, been in effect, supporting Morocco's occupation for many years, just as it has been supporting Israel's occupation for many years. Uh, Trump, in both cases, has gone well beyond uh, what previous administrations of both parties have done and, 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 and violated uh, long-standing international legal norms uh, in the case of, 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 of uh, Palestine, uh, recognizing uh, 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 Jerusalem as solely Israel's capital, moving the U.S. embassy there, and uh, recognizing uh, Israel's illegal annexation of the uh, Syria's Golan Heights. Uh, in the case of uh, Morocco, it's uh, e even even worse because it's not just talking about uh, uh, re uh, recognizing an illegal annexation of a portion of a country, but an annexation of an entire country. And and in the case of, of Western Sahara, remember, uh, Western Sahara, the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic has been recognized by over 80 nations around the world and is a full member of the African Union. In a sense, uh, uh, Trump is now recognizing the takeover of one African nation by another. Again, this is unprecedented since the signing of the United Nations Charter for the United States or any nation, really, uh, to, uh, to, to, to recognize such a, a, a brazen violation of international legal norms. I wanted to go to Madrid, Spain, to get the response of Maloud Saeed. You represent the Polisario Front in Washington, D.C., though you're in Spain right now. Can you talk about what this means? Uh, the Trump administration doing something that has not been done by any country in the world, recognizing the annexation of Western Sahara. What does this mean for the Sahrawi people? Good morning, Gemi, and thank you for having me. Um, the Sahrawi government uh, condemns and regrets this decision taken by President Trump, which breaks away from all the previous administration policies. And, um, but this decision is not going to change the fact that the, Western, the Sahrawi Republic is a full member of the African Union, that Morocco occupies part of this territory, and it's not going to change the nature of the, of the, of the conflict. This decision, it was done without advancing any legal argument, because they, they will not find it anywhere. And uh, Western Sahara is not just a, a piece of real estate that uh, President Trump can give. It's a territory that belongs to its people and a full-fledged member of, an interna of a continental organization. Like uh, it was very well said by Professor Zunis, this is the first time that uh, a country is trying to to up, to to to, to uh, ignore another member state uh, as if the African Union did not exist, as the Sahara Republic is not a member of the African Union, 
And uh, so this is uh, really something that we, really, we condemn this position, but it's not going to change on anything, the, the situation, because the Sahrawi people are going to continue with their struggle. We are not going to stop. And uh, this is, uh, you say, this is the first uh, uh, power that recognizes, it's the first power that violates international law bluntly in the Western Sahara. And because of, it, since it's a violation of international law, it's not going to have any effect on the issue. By the way, already the European Union came up with a statement disassociating itself from this uh, decision and the United Nations. And they want to take this opportunity to thank the senators that acted so promptly and members of Congress, in particular, Senator Jim Inhofe, Senator Patrick Leahy, and Elliot, uh, Congressman Elliot Angle, the chairman of the International Relations Committee, Congresswoman Betty Collum, and others that they disassociated themselves, and some of them, they even condemned this kind of, uh, of decision. I wanted to go right now inside occupied Western Sahara to El Ayoun to speak with Nasha El Khalidi, uh, who is inside her home, where many are in their homes, but police have laid siege to the area. And Nasha, I wanted to welcome you to Democracy Now! You're a journalist as well with a Keep Media. You've been arrested by the Moroccans. Can you respond to the Trump administration recognizing Morocco's sovereignty over your territory and what this means for you? What is the situation inside? Thank you very much, Amy Goodman, and thanks uh, to Democracy Now! for uh, talking to us and give uh, to the Sahrawi activists uh, from the occupied territory of Western Sahara the opportunity to share uh, their stories and uh, to share testimonies of victims. Um, regarding the situation in the occupied territory, uh, there is a major crackdown uh, on the, the Sahrawi uh, rights, on the Sahara, uh, on the freedom of speech, on the freedom of movement, on the freedom of assembly, especially after Morocco violated the, the ceasefire and the, the war uh, start again. Uh, Morocco started a wave of arrests against Sahrawi activists in the occupied territory. Um, uh, the, the oppression and the repression against the Sahrawi peaceful movements uh, uh, raising uh, day by, by day, and Morocco keep arresting people. Now now there are dozens of Sahrawi activists who are behind bars in Moroccan prisons. Uh, the people in Western Sahara are not allowed to express themselves. Uh, there are no um, press agencies in the, in, in the ground uh, that can um, the document the violations against Sahrawi human beings in here. Morocco is continue closing the territory in front of the international observer, international activists, and international um, journalists. So we uh, determined and we described uh, Western Sahara as a, a black hole, as a, it was described by uh, RSF uh, reports uh, two years ago, and uh, by international organizations. It's um, it's completely closed, and we are suffered in uh, silence. Regarding uh, the um, Donald Trump recognition, um, we believe that this will not uh, erase our uh, legitimate right to freedom and uh, independence. Sahrawi people people uh, is continue struggling and we are not surprised since uh, we have been betrayed by the international community for over 30 years where we were waiting for a peaceful solution from the United Nations that we have been promised by, by the United Nations and there is a mission uh, to organize a, a, a fear referendum and to offer the opportunity to Sahrawi people to vote uh, and to determine their own future by the, themselves. So we are not surprised uh, by um, like the recognition from Trump, and uh, I think the study of uh, Western Sahara is already determined by international law. So not by a tweet uh, of a president who is already in his way out. So the international law is clear and uh, is set out uh, in successive United Nations Security Council resolutions that were authored by the U.S. itself. 
uh, and that Western Sahara statue will be determined by uh, a referendum. We hope the incoming uh, Biden administration will return the U.S. to a nation that respects long-standing uh, international law and that will use uh, its influence to uh, encourage um, the meaningful uh, the United Nations lead peace talks uh, on Western Sahara that have been uh, neglected. We hope that the new U.S. administration will resolve the long-standing conflict in Western Sahara and help deliver uh, what the Sahrawi people have long been promised um, uh, by the United Nations, uh, uh, which is a promise to uh, uh, give them a simple right, which is uh, the vote for uh, our freedom. So uh, the Donald Trump recognition will not stop uh, the Sahrawi struggle and uh, will not uh, in the end uh, the Sahrawi uh, believes in, uh, in, in uh, achieving uh, a legal rights and fighting for legal rights, which is independence, and establish their state on their uh, land. Um, finally, I wanted to ask Steve Zunas um, about this latest report in Reuters um, that talks about um, the U.S. planning to sell um, negotiating the sale of at least four sophisticated large aerial drones to Morocco. Um, not clear uh, whether it is related to this, though it's coming at the same time. And you have the longtime supporter of Israel, the outgoing congressman head of the House Foreign uh, Relations Committee, Elliot Engel, while applauding um, uh, the relationship between Jerusalem and Rabat um, warned the Trump administration against casting aside legitimate multilateral avenues of conflict resolution, doing something no other country in the world has done. Uh, Professor Zunis, you have 30 seconds. The, uh, the, the uh, drone sale is of concern because it's illegal for the United States to support, uh, to, to, to provide uh, in invading armies with this kind of sophisticated equipment. But now that uh, uh, Western Sahara is recognized as part of Morocco, suddenly it's an internal conflict. And so this paves the way for this kind of equipment, which could be uh, used in, uh, in counterinsurgency situations. In terms of Engel, it's, imp it's uh, important that someone who is so strongly pro-Israel is willing to break with uh, the administration uh, on this point. The question is what Biden is going to do, because Biden could reverse the um, uh, annexation, uh, recognition of the annexation with a stroke of a pen, but he'd be under a lot of pressure because then Israel, uh, then Morocco could use this as an excuse to nullify their uh, recognition of Israel. So Biden's going to be in a lot of pressure by pro-Israel groups not to uh, rescind uh, Trump's order. So it's good that you have somebody like Engel, uh, who is, 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 is challenging uh, at the, uh, the, uh, Trump's decision. And finally, Maloud Saeed, the status of the ceasefire between uh, Morocco and the Polisario. Since um, the Moroccans invaded, I mean, crossed the, the buffer zone, and this was stated by the president of the Sahara Republic, Mr. Brahim Ghali, we say that the ceasefire was over, and therefore we're back to square one, to the situation which we find ourselves in 1991. So right now, the, there is the war going on from the south of Western Sahara till the north, from Gergara to Mahdes. So the, 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 the ceasefire is not anymore, it's, uh, it's over. Now it's just a war that will continue until the final liberation of the of the remaining part of the territory. And it's sad that this decision by Mr. Trump comes at the day, the, the day of the international, the day that everybody was celebrating the human rights, uh, the, the anniversary of the human rights declaration.